Welcome history enthusiasts and curious minds alike. Today we journey back in time to explore the fascinating world of Roman civilization. It's a tale of mythical beginnings, strategic locations, and the establishment of an empire that would leave an indelible mark on human history. Let's first delve into the mythical origins of Rome. According to legend, the city was founded by the twin brothers Romulus and Remus. Abandoned at birth and raised by a she-wolf, the twins eventually grew up to build a city of their own. A dispute over the city's throne led Romulus to kill Remus, thus becoming the first king of Rome. Whether fact or fiction, this tale symbolizes the tumultuous beginnings of Rome. However, historians trace the actual origins of Rome back to the establishment of the Roman Kingdom in 753 BC. This was a time when Rome was just a cluster of small villages nestled among seven hills. The community's growth was greatly influenced by its strategic location along the Tiber River, a crucial waterway for trade and transportation. This river, with its easy access to the sea, would later become the lifeblood of the Roman Empire. The geography of Rome and Italy also played a significant role in its early development. The city was perfectly situated in the heart of Italy, with the mighty Alps to the north offering natural protection, and the Mediterranean Sea to the west providing opportunities for expansion and exploration. This strategic location set the stage for Rome's future dominance over the Mediterranean. The early Romans, influenced by their Etruscan neighbors, gradually evolved from a monarchy to a complex political system, laying the groundwork for the Roman Republic. This transition marked the end of the Roman Kingdom and the beginning of a new era in Roman history. Thus, from a cluster of small villages, the foundation of one of history's greatest empires was laid. The dawn of Roman civilization was a period of growth, transformation and the relentless pursuit of power. It was the beginning of a journey that would shape the course of history in ways that still resonate today. As our tale unfolds, Rome evolves from a kingdom into a republic, a significant shift that would fuel its expansion. This transformation occurs in the year 509 before Christ, marking a pivotal moment in the annals of Roman history. The monarchy is overthrown, and in its place a new form of government emerges, one that values the voice of its citizenry, the republic. This republic is a unique entity, a balancing act of power between two consuls elected annually by an assembly dominated by Rome's patrician class. These consuls share the executive power, acting as both military and civil leaders, their authority checked by each other's presence and the watchful eyes of the Senate. Ah, the Senate, an institution that becomes the heart of the republic, its pulse echoing through the corridors of power. This assembly of elders, initially composed of Rome's aristocracy, the patricians, would eventually open its doors to the plebeians, Rome's common folk. It is here, within the Senate, that the policies shaping Rome's destiny are decided, the strategies of war and peace debated. Speaking of war, it's impossible to discuss the Republic without mentioning the Punic Wars. These epic conflicts against the Carthaginian Empire mark a defining period of expansion for Rome. The First Punic War sees Rome establishing dominance over the Mediterranean Sea. The second brings Rome into direct conflict with the legendary General Hannibal, but ends with Rome triumphant and in control of key territories in the Mediterranean. The Third and Final Punic War signals the end of Carthage, its once mighty rival reduced to ashes, its territory now a Roman province. These wars not only expand Rome's territories, but also establish it as a dominant power in the ancient world. The Republic, though marred by internal strife, propelled Rome to unprecedented heights and set the stage for an even grander spectacle, the Roman Empire. Here arises the era of the mighty Roman Empire, where Rome's glory shone the brightest. This period marked a significant shift in Rome's governance, as it transitioned from a Republic to an Empire. This change was a result of the political maneuvering and military prowess of one man, Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar, a name synonymous with power and leadership, played a pivotal role in this transformation. As a military general, he expanded Rome's territories, winning the hearts of many Romans. His popularity, however, threatened the Roman Senate, leading to his assassination in 44 BC. But Caesar's death didn't mark the end of the empire's rise. In fact, it was just the beginning. Stepping into Caesar's shoes was his adopted heir, Octavian, later known as Augustus. Augustus, with his strategic acumen, defeated his rivals, and in 27 BC, he became Rome's first emperor. 
His reign marked the commencement of the Pax Romana or the Roman Peace, a period of relative peace and stability that lasted for over 200 years. The Pax Romana was not just about peace, it was also a time of prosperity and growth. Rome witnessed significant architectural and cultural achievements during this era. The construction of iconic structures like the Colosseum, the Pantheon, and the aqueducts are testaments to Rome's architectural brilliance. These structures, even today, inspire awe and admiration, reminding us of Rome's grandeur. Culture thrived during this period with advances in literature, art, and philosophy. Latin literature reached its zenith with works from greats like Virgil, Horace, and Ovid. The Roman law, another significant achievement, laid the foundation for many modern legal systems. The Roman Empire at its zenith was more than just a political entity. It was a beacon of civilization and progress, a testament to human ingenuity and perseverance. Its influence can be seen even today, centuries after its fall, in our laws, our buildings, and our cultures. The Roman Empire, in its resplendent peak, stood as a beacon of civilization and progress. However, all great tales have an end, and so did the Roman Empire. The decline of this colossal civilization was not an overnight event, but rather a slow, agonizing descent that spanned centuries. Multiple factors contributed to this downfall, creating a perfect storm that eventually proved too overwhelming. One of the main culprits was economic crises. The empire was bleeding wealth, with the cost of maintaining its vast territories and military becoming untenable. Rampant inflation, corruption, and a dwindling middle class only added fuel to the fire. The once robust economy of Rome was now a mere shell of its former self. Then there were the military issues. Rome's glory had been built on the back of its powerful legions, but with time, the military began to crumble. The constant wars and the reliance on foreign mercenaries, who had little loyalty to Rome, strained the empire's military resources. The very force that had expanded Rome's borders was now contributing to its decline. The division of the empire into eastern and western halves was another significant factor. This split, although initially intended to improve administrative efficiency, only led to further disunity and conflict. The eastern and western empires, with their diverging interests, often found themselves at odds, weakening the collective strength of Rome. The final blows came in the form of the sack of Rome by the Visigoths in the year 410 and later the fall of the Western Roman Empire to the Ostrogoths in 476. These events marked the end of more than a millennium of Roman dominance. And so, the sun set on the Roman Empire, but its legacy continued to echo through the ages. The fall of Rome was not just the end of an empire, but also the beginning of a new era in world history an era that would be shaped in no small part by the echoes of Rome's grandeur and the lessons of its decline. In its fall, Rome was not forgotten. Instead, it left an indelible mark on the tapestry of human history. As we delve into the legacy of Rome, we find ourselves surrounded by its echoes in every sphere of our modern world. The Romans were pioneers in the field of law. They established a legal system that emphasized the rights and duties of citizens. Today, many legal principles, such as innocent until proven guilty, trace their roots back to Roman law. The Latin language, once the lingua franca of the Roman Empire, has not vanished. Rather, it has morphed and evolved into the Romance languages we speak today, including Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese, and Romanian. Roman architecture, with its grand arches, domes, and aqueducts, has profoundly influenced Western architecture. Even the layout of our cities, with their central squares and grid-like streets, bear the imprint of Roman city planning. The Roman culture, with its emphasis on public service, civic duty, and personal honor, has deeply shaped Western values and norms. The Romans' love for arts and literature, their philosophical musings, their political dialogues, all of these have enriched our intellectual and cultural landscape. Rome may have fallen, but its echoes are heard even today, resonating in our laws, our languages, and our cities. The legacy of Rome is not confined to the past, but is an integral part of our present and will continue to shape our future.